What up, what up? So I don't feel like practicing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, there's a few things I want to do. I'm looking at Little Sunflower by Freddie Hubbard from his Backlash album. And uh, I'm going to review the melody, um, review the solo that he's playing. I'm going to see if I can practice one of his licks in a few keys, if not all the keys. And hopefully I can get all this done before my family comes back home, my wife and my kid. But I really don't feel like practicing. So here we go. We're going to tr trudge along. If you don't feel like practicing, put a num number one in the chat. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get it done. All right, so let me review the melody. The reason why I have two headphones in, because I know I'm going to get um, flagged if I, have the, if I have the recording playing. So I can hear the recording, but you can't. My mom said number one. <laughs> you don't feel like practicing. <laughs> All right. Little Sunflower. For some reason, transitioning into that B section, I always kind of forget. Sometimes I always get, you know, uh, caught up on that. <laughs> Brooklyn said, my teacher told me to practice my trumpet, but I didn't feel like it. We in the same boat. But this time I'm my own teacher, so I really don't feel like practicing. Um, all right, so what I'm listening to now, I'm listening to Freddie play the melody. I'm trying my best to match his sound, his inflection, his articulation, um, everything as much as possible. So I'm hearing him in my ears. You can't hear him because I'm not trying to get flagged or copyright stuff on this channel, but um. Yeah, uh, let me review the the solo. It's a little bit rusty, uh, but let's see. So what I'm doing, the project I've been working on for myself and my own development is learning this song. And he, this is a very famous song. And so he's played this about a million times. So I'm trying to learn multiple versions of his approach to this song. Um, most of the recordings are the same as far as like his approach to soloing over this this tune. Uh, it's a modal tune, 
it has about three chords in it, but um, the way he plays over it is uh, I want to get that in my playing. Um, my overall analysis of it is <clears throat> the A sections where he had where he has E minor. I'm talking trumpet pitch where he has E minor. He plays really melodic, like melodically. Um, and then in the B sections, he's going into more uh, double time and playing fast stuff. And that's the stuff I need to work on. I can play melodically, but that double, that double time stuff is my weakness. So I need to absorb that language, get that under my, my fingers, in my ears, so it sounds and feels natural. So just a little bit about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So, uh, so I'm bringing up the recording. So hello, what's up to everybody that's here? Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you're enjoying your summer. If you're enjoying your summer, put a number one in the chat. If you're not, put a zero in the chat. <laughs> Toby says zero. All right, here's a solo. It's not at tempo. It's going to be slower. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so I'm again, I missed that double time part. Let's work on that. Yeah. 
coming down that arpeggio. Uh, da di da do. It sounds cool, right? All it is is just some arpeggios, man. And when I figured that out, I'm like, wow. Arpeggios, just arpeggios going down? That's crazy. And he makes it sound so easy. And it's not. <laughs> And then another thing is that he he articulates a lot. So you can't get away with slurring everything when you're playing the solo or playing any anything Freddie Hubbard. So he just effortlessly tongues everything, just like Clifford Brown. But it's it's like even. If you guys know what I'm saying, it's it's not short or not not short, but staccato. But his is is a lot more, and he's playing flugelhorn on this. He's playing flugelhorn on this, so it sounds real smooth, real you know, real cool. Um, versus on trumpet, but I'm trying to get that flugel sound on trumpet. So, yeah, that's just that's my sound concept. I want to sound like I'm playing flugelhorn. That last one, and he also makes makes that uh, that triplet so smooth, um, going straight into consist, consistent eighth notes. Um, and again, he's tonguing, so there's a there's this. <clears throat> So he's going from F sharp to D sharp, and that has the same fingering. And so it's really tough, and I tried it myself to try to slur that, but it doesn't come out as smooth as his. So um, he's definitely at least tonguing that, I believe, what I'm hearing. And that's as smooth as I can get it if I can, if I can tongue it. But if I try to slur it, it just isn't as smooth. So sounds much better much better just gotta iron out some few things and so i'm feeling pretty good i'm feeling pretty good um as far as uh i'm practicing and so i'm i'm getting i'm getting better i'm feeling better about practicing now now that i'm in it 
So sometimes you just got to force yourself to do it. And then once you're in it, it feels good. Pause. Nick says, does anyone have a tip for me how I can get a get a better switch between trumpet and trombone? Because I, after I play trom trombone, the trumpet mouthpiece is so slim for me. I just practice and it doesn't help. Um, with the little time that I've spent with trombone and trumpet at the same time during my degree is um, practice more, you know, going back and forth between the two. It's... And what what helped me is just getting acclimated to the mouthpiece is just blow some air patterns and making sure the air, especially if you're transitioning back from trombone, is making sure the air is going inside the mouthpiece and nowhere else. So that's going to take just more uh, aperture focus. So just pretend as if you're two people when you're when you're practicing multiple instruments, especially trombone and trumpet. So if you're playing your C major scale or concert B flat scale, play it on trumpet and then play it on and then play it on trombone. You know, play it on trumpet for five minutes, take a small break, one to two minutes, and then go straight and try to play that same thing and make it as as good um, on tr on trombone if if your if your main instrument is trumpet. So anything that you're practicing, try to practice the same thing on both instruments and try to see if you can make it sound the same in one session. But don't go too crazy. Just spend a couple minutes on one instrument, then switch to the next instrument, and then that could be your practice. That's what I did. Um, so hopefully that helps. All right, let's get back to some uh, some more. Let's now play this with the record. You you guys won't be able to hear the record because I'm again I'm not trying to get flagged, but I'm going to see if I can put this into context. So much better than before, as far as like the B section when he goes into that double time stuff. But the real trouble I'm having with this uh, this solo, and it's slower, but is his phrasing. Like I'm 
I'm not breathing deep enough to finish the phrase because he holds out those long notes a lot longer than I think. And so it's really important that I get that phrasing right. Um, but one thing at a time uh, with the solo, I just kind of really want to focus on that double time stuff. That's feeling good. Everything else is sounding pretty good, but I really got the next time. I just got to get the breathing down because uh, I'm running out of breath <laughs> before he before he ends his notes. Um, so. So that's at 75 percent, not at 99, because at the at those double times places that gets pretty fast. So I'm working my way up. Um, <clears throat> next thing I want to tackle. Next thing I want to tackle is uh, um, this double time lick uh, or part of it. Getting into it. So this is this is what that lick is. You already heard me play it if you're here watching live. But this is the one that I'm going to take through all the keys. So it's real simple. Um, this uh, this lick is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So it happens on the one. To on the E of the third beat. So one, two, three. Da -da -ba -da 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 -ba -da -da. So what this lick is, just break it down real quick, is he's starting on the fifth. So this is this is our E major scale, our E major scale. So trumpet pitch, I'm talking. Uh concert D for everybody else. He's starting on the fifth of that chord. So for us trumpet players, that's B. And so he's scaling up to Da, da, de, da. So he's scaling up to the seven. So five, six, seven, da, da, da. And then he's going down the E major arpeggio, E major seventh arpeggio. So uh, five, six, seven, five, three, one. Five, six, seven, five, three, one. Da, 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 da. And to me, it's 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 just that sim it's crazy how simple that is, but how fire it sounds. So, um, so the reason why I broke it down is is so I can take it through the keys. So, if you know all your major scales, if you know your major arpeggios, then this should be no problem for you. So, I'm gonna start on E. Then I'm gonna go go around in the circle of fours. So E, then A major, and then D major, then G major, then C major, F major, B flat, E flat, A flat, so on and so forth. So this is E. We're starting on the fifth, scaling up to the seventh, and then going down the major arpeggio. Seven, five, three, one, da, da, dee, da, da, da. So I just went went around in the circle of fifths, uh, circle of fourths. Uh, the F sharp, well, was it? No. Yeah, it was the F sharp that tripped me up. Started on the fifth. Um, now, instead of the going around the circle of fifths, I'm going to go chromatically. So I'm going to start on my lowest note or our lowest note, uh, which is uh, the bottom note is going to be F sharp. So that means we're gonna we're gonna start in F sharp major and go up in half steps until we reach the octave. So I'm gonna do F sharp major and then G, and then A flat, then A, B flat, B, C, 
so on and so forth until I get to F major. So again, the, the lick is starting on the fifth of a major key. Five, six, seven. We're scaling up from five. Five, six, seven. Five, three, one. And then going down the arpeggio. But let's start on F sharp, concert E. So that means we're going to start on the fifth, which is C sharp, concert B. So now I'm on C, I'm going to C sharp. So start on the fifth of C sharp, concert B. The fifth of C sharp is G sharp. So I just did that. That was in half steps going up. So what I like to do is, is start on my lowest note. And, and then if I have time or whatever, then I, I, I'll take it up until my highest note. But I'm not going to do that today. Uh, so, yeah, that's that lick in all 12 keys in both the circle of fourths, circle of fifths, and going up chromatically. So Rustlin says, thank you so much for, thank you so very much for sharing your knowledge with all skill levels. I myself am a beginner, but I feel watching your lessons has pushed me forward at a good pace. I always enjoy your playing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, you know, with practice, um, it, it also helps to talk out loud in your practice. And this is why I do it, um, because most times when I practice, I record myself. And I talk to myself in my practice so I can, I can, you know, review my notes, review my thoughts as I'm practicing and uh, in, in real time. And then just look over the tape, listen to it, see what was happening, see how I can make it better for the next day. So this is what I, I usually do anyway. It's just you guys are here with me today. So, um Welcome. Welcome. So it's always it's always good to um, record your practice and listen back. And what's even better is that you talk to yourself in your practice and um, like talk about things that might have went wrong or things that went well, why they went well, what's going on, what's your mindset, how do you feel, things like that. Right. So uh, what's next? Now, I want to apply this lick to a tune. So, uh, not not little sunflower because I mean I'm already you're already playing that lick in the little sunflower, so it it kind of defeats the purpose. So, <laughs> I'm going to do it over uh, Joy Spring because that dog on tune has has about nine key centers in it, or it tonicizes nine keys out of twelve in it. So. Um, yeah. Um, and that I can actually play, but I, nah, no, I'll just keep it in my ears because then I got to set it up and I can already hear my folks. My ladies are back from running errands. So I'm going to do this and then that'll be it. we have to wash little Ari's hair tonight. And that's a whole thing. I want to put up that mirror my mom bought so she can see, so my daughter can see herself in the mirror while we wash her hair. It does take two people, unfortunately. because She hates getting her hair, her hair washed. She's two and two months, two years old. Uh, so yeah. 
All right. So, Joy Spring. Nine key centers. I'm just going to do one section at a time. So, the first eight bars. So, in Joy Spring, the first eight bars is G major. It's pretty much tonicizing G major. But if you're including the other two fives that are in this section, it's also tonicizing <clears throat> uh, B flat major and A flat minor, uh, A flat major going into the B section. So for the first three bars, it's going to be G major. The fourth bar is going to be B flat major. Um, and then the seventh bar is going to be G major again. And then lastly, it's going to be a two five going to A flat major. So I'm going to play that the lick that that I just played um, uh, uh, over this over this these chord changes. Real slow, not super fast. Is that change? I always mess it up. Jesus. B flat. So it's B minor to B flat seven to A minor. So in that section, I always that's that's the pretty pretty God. It's pretty much the hardest spot in this tune. Is uh uh is the uh kind of three six two five three six two five one, but the three six the six is a tritone. So it's a there's a chromatic thing happening. So from it's B minor to B flat seven, that's the tritone, to A minor seven, and so that's the two five going into G, right? So I messed that up. It's the B flat. I you gotta. I have to start on B flat. Got to start on B flat, Aaron. Okay, cool. You got that. All right. So all right. Let's do this again.
Okay, okay. There we go. Here we go. I got it. <laughs> Lord. So anytime I'm doing this practice, I also like to um uh Im- imp- improvise a little bit in between and try to try to connect it, maybe, you know, try to connect my ideas into the uh the idea that I'm drilling so that it can it can be a little bit more fluid and more natural, you know, within my playing. So got some comments here. Jesse, you're a legend, bro. Thank you, Jesse. 12 a 12, 15 a.m. here in Dublin. I'm about to wake up some neighbors. <laughs> you're gonna get your horn out. Uh, do you have any tips for when air leaks out from the sides of your mouth? Yes. Think about or imagine the air going inside the cup um, of your mouthpiece. And and yeah, just make sure all the air that you're that you're putting in the mouthpiece is going is going inside the mouthpiece. So just do that by just blowing wind. And then just check it to see if there's any leakage. Right. So that's something easy that you can do. And then just transfer that to long tones and then transfer that to scales, transfer that to, you know, uh, arpeggios, things like that. Brian Dimson says, what is your best advice to start improvising? Um, the best advice is to uh, start learning things on your instrument by ear and learn, learn things, little songs, little ditties that you already know and can, and, and can sing and can have internalized um, and play that on your trumpet. Say if that's happy birthday. Try to figure out happy birthday on your on your instrument. But not only do that, but try to try to do that in multiple keys, if not all the keys. So da da di do da da. Right? I don't have perfect pitch, but I'm very connected to my instrument because I sing and then play a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So the best advice is to sing and play everything that you hear and do it in multiple keys. Um, the next thing, obviously, would be to listen to records and listen to it as much so, so you can sing it and then take it to your horn. Yep. Aaron, some months back when you mentioned something about the seven attenuations of trumpet. Can you talk some more about that concept? Uh, I'm not really sure what the seven, not really sure what that, that might be. Maybe if you kind of jog my memory about the video or the idea, then I can, I can help. Lemony boy, my harmon mute keeps falling out of my horn. Any tips to make it stay? Yeah, do this. And then just put it in. The the condensation kind of locks that um that uh the cork inside your bell. So fog up the window, fog up the fog up the bell, and then put it in. Give it a few twists. Richard says, What is your favorite transcription? Um this one so far. It has to be <laughs> little sunflower. It has to be right now because I'm working on that one right now. Um, Brian says, my teacher told me to do that with jingle bells, but I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just um, with, when it comes to improvising or just playing by ear, just start with the things you already know and try to just play it on your horn. When I was younger, I would play songs from the radio. Because I, I had already, I know them already. And I'm just looking at myself in the camera. I look funny with two headphones on. That's crazy. So when I started, you know, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to play things that was on the radio. So for me, that was. <laughs> Brush your shoulders off by Jay-Z. And so I would learn that on my trumpet. And then it would just be other songs that I knew. Uh, da, de, da. 
da 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 di da da di do do running a da di da da di di So learn stuff that you already know that's on the radio. You're already singing this stuff. And then just try to learn it on your instrument. If you do that every day, I promise you, you'll get better at improvising because you'll be playing from memory, playing from your ear. So, yeah. What What is that T.I. song, though? I forgot the name of it. Da, de, da. Is that T.I.? I know he's on that record. Yeah, it's a T.I. song, but I don't know which one it is. Um, the band, the band Lee show. Hello, I've been watching your a lot of your stuff lately, and I'm a big fan. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're you're enjoying the content. Someone's t uh, giving mutes. Cool, cool, cool. Giving uh, tips. <laughs> Blue in seven seven seven. Hello, I'm from Brazil. I'm new here on the channel. Good to have you. Thank you for being here. Uh, shout out to all the 30 some people in here. That's really dope. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. Uh, I played trumpet for six years. And I'm in love with this instrument. That's great. Keep it up. Keep loving it. Keep loving it. Love the process rather. Love the process rather than the result. If you love the process, playing the trumpet will be a lot easier. Okay. So um, what did I just do? What's up, Master Spy? I just want to stop by there. Stop by. There needs to be more of these streams around YouTube. Like, like these practicing type streams? What do you mean? Uh, okay. So, yeah, TI 24s. 24s, yeah. Da -de -da. Dun, dun, dun. That that used yeah because we I used to play that I used to play that uh it it was on um uh, who knows uh this this driving game um midnight midnight what was it called man midnight something I used to play that all the time on uh, on PS P was it meet midnight madness no it was a racing game was it called midnight madness. On PlayStation 2. Midnight. Midnight Madness. PlayStation. What's it called? Uh, I don't think that was it. Mid. What was it? Was it Midnight Madness? Midnight Club. Midnight Club. Yep, that driving game. Yep. Midnight Club. Yep, that was it. And it had that song in it. It had that song in it. Midnight Club. And it had that song in it. So I was like, okay, I love this tune. I love this. And so I want to learn. I want to play it on trumpet. Heck. So, so yeah. All right. So let me get back to practicing. This is going to be the last thing I do, and then I'll be out of here. I said that before, but I was lying. Because now I'm I'm fired up. I want to practice more. All right, so let's take the B section. So the same double time lick, but just up a half step.
Okay, so yeah. That's my practice for the night. So what I did was I, I uh, reviewed the Little Sunflower Melody by Freddie, Freddie, uh, why am I blanking? Lord, brain fog. Freddie Hubbard. And I reviewed his solo. I, I, I wanted to... I wanted to get down the uh, the double time licks in the B section, making sure that was nice and smooth. I did that, but I still need to work on the phrasing and making sure I'm holding out the notes for as long as he is. Then I practiced uh, one of part of a double time lick from that solo, and I apply, applied it to Joy Spring, the first two sections, and I only applied it to, uh, well... That's pretty much the entire sections, but I applied it to the major, the major chords in in those sections, and I applied it to, uh, like if it was a two five, then I would play it over the five. So, yeah, if you understand what that means, then you know what I'm saying. So, I played the lick over the major chord and over the dominant chord within the two five, and I played that over the A section and the B section. Yep. So that was my practice. I practice today. One small step <laughs> towards a bigger goal. But yeah. Uh, any questions before I go? Any comments? Just one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Carlos Garcia. I just watched a video of Bobby Shu talking about wedge breathing. What are your feelings about it? I think it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant thing. As as a teacher, I'm always talking about uh, breath support coming from the core, and I actually need to dive into it a lot deeper to just to make sure my understanding of it is correct of the wedge breath. Um, but yeah, we need that support from the bottom, and so uh, yeah, I just need to study it more. Maybe study it. Ex- Extremely from the source. Hit up Mr. 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 Shu. Uh yeah. Grace says, Hi, I'm in high school marching band. I'm struggling with the solo. Can you help me? It's Daft Punk Melody, Messenger 71 through 76. You can find the music here on YouTube. On it's about two minutes. What's giving you the most trouble, Grace, on that solo? What's what's uh What's giving you the most trouble? What's what's hard about it? Oni Maru says, Hi, I love the channel. Any tips to stop getting that annoying grainy sound on the mid to high register? Don't know if you answered. No, I didn't answer that. And that's a great question because I always deal with that, uh, deal with that um that type of sound in my lessons that I teach. And so that grainy sound or maybe a double buzz that is what you're getting is the result of of um, the aperture not being focused enough and you and not blowing fast enough so um, make sure that whatever note that you're playing it, or anytime you play the instrument make sure that the air is going straight into the cup and nowhere else and this will help you get more focus in your aperture and so making sure all every particle of air is inside the cup and is and it's not escaping from the sides of your mouth if it is just focus a little bit more close your eyes and do it and then firm up the corners just a bit relax the middle of the chops uh the next thing that for you to remedy remedy that that uh grainy sound is to blow faster for the note to get rid of that grainy sound. So so what do I mean by blow faster? Blow farther away from you. So what do I mean by that? So say if this is low C, we're playing low C and this is where it is. If we want if we want to play the C above it, think farther away. Blow farther away from you. So 
So that's where C, middle C, well, not middle C, but C in the staff is. And then if we go up another octave, that C is how here. So low C, C in the staff, C above the staff. Right? So making sure that you're blowing um, away from you. Well, not or blowing farther away, the higher you go. Okay. Um, and also, what does fast air mean? Get a piece of paper, maybe something colorful like this, like my daughter drew, and blow the piece of paper away from you, making sure that the bottom of the paper is flapping farther away from you. So that's what I mean by distance. Now, if I want to blow a low note, I need the paper to float closer to me. Right? So it's floating closer to me. I'm going to blow slower and I'm going to blow slower and then fast. So yeah, focus, focus aperture, making sure all the air is going inside the cup and nowhere else, and faster air. Think farther away from you. Do the paper trick. Blow from here. Blow from the gut. Blow from the gut, not from the chest or not from the neck, okay? Let's see. Yeah, I need to get out of here. Uh, Grace says you're having trouble with the it's very fast and high pitch for some reason. I can't get the last last get the last measure. Get the last 10 measures. Okay. Any suggestions on playing with braces? I've never had braces, but um be patient, play soft, and uh Try not to jam the mouthpiece on your chops. So um, practice everything quietly. Um, and at first it's not going to sound good. So don't have high expectations for yourself as far as I want this to sound the best I can because it's not going to. And you need to be okay with that. Um, have trust in the process rather than um, having you know, uh, relying on the result, okay? So play softer and be patient. Lemony boy, I've been playing the trumpet for three months. <clears throat> we'll be playing for eight months by the time my school's stage band starts. The music is fairly easy. Do you think I could join and play second or third trumpet. It depends on how how much you practice. It depends on how hard you work. Uh, my tone isn't too bad, but needs work. And the highest I can play is a high G trying to work on it though. Uh, really perfect and really, uh, really perfect what you can do right now, as far as uh, the notes that you can play how high you can play, be very, um, have a core fundamental sound in your main register and, um, and practice your butt off, man. Um, I usually practice a couple hours a day since, yeah, this is the time. This is the time when you're young, practice your butt off. Um, um, but, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Make sure you have you you rest. You you have some rest in between. You don't over practice because over practicing is a thing, and you can hurt yourself that way. I've hurt myself that way. So, practice your butt off. Work hard. Uh, practice with people that are better than you, and uh, you'll get there. You might even be first chair, but it all depends on your work ethic, your patience, and um, how smart you practice in the practice room.
Francisco says, how do you play the shit out of a tune instead of playing the shit out of the solo section? <laughs> um, what do you mean? Solo section. Oh, well, playing a song well, that has to deal with um, style and listening and developing your taste. So what that means is you have to listen to a lot of people playing melodies. Um, as a horn player, listen to singers and try to emulate singers because that's what every horn player wants to do, really. We want to sound as if we're singing. So the best thing that you can do to play the shit out of a song is to emulate is to emulate uh, a singer. So that's one. And then solo sections, just if you want to play really well over a solo section or, or a tune, uh, do your homework. Listen to, uh, listen to people that are improvising over that tune. Copy what they're doing. Imitate what they're doing apply it to the tune, memorize it, find other people that are playing over that tune, check out what they're doing, transcribe it, sing it, memorize it, analyze it, see how you can make it your own, and rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. And then the more you do that, the more you develop your style because you're, you're, you're stealing and you're getting inspiration from others. So, so yeah. Going into freshman year, this is Taylor. Going into freshman year of high school, start band camp tomorrow. Any tips for coming back to it over a break? Make sure you you practice. Yeah, because you don't want to be rusty on day one of of uh, band band camp. So at least you know tonight, practice. You know. Do some long tones, do some, get your, get your mind right, practice a little bit. So, so uh, you don't have to be rusty on day one. Cause you, I'm not saying that you haven't practiced cause I don't know what you've been doing, but make, make sure that you at least touch the horn before you go tomorrow between right now and when band camp starts. Uh, Owen, starting starting college band next year. What would I need to watch out for? Can a high D can hit a high D, decent tonguing, someone with fast fingers, play music, play music. All that stuff is great, hitting high notes, uh, decent tonguing, but play music, play music, uh, play music that you hear on the radio, play sight read as much as possible. Take some, take some books, take some A2 books and work on an A2 a week or A2 every two weeks and really get your reading together. Uh, because playing high, tonguing, that's like those are just little pieces of the puzzle. The whole, the whole picture is music. So practice music. Big Dog 345 says, what kind of trumpet is that you're holding? A box strat? No, it's a BNS Challenger 2 uh, reverse lead pipe. All right, last question. Now I'm out. I got to wash my daughter's hair. Goofy Goobers, why are long tones beneficial? This is an excellent question, and I'm glad this is the last question. Uh, long tones is beneficial because think about it like this. Let's say you have... You want to keep in contact with, I'm going to say just an arbitrary number, 33 close friends and family. So what are you going to do? You're going to text them. You're going to call them. You're going to make sure they're okay, right? You're going to, you know, make sure you touch base so you still have a good relationship with them, right? Now, apply that to long tones and each and every single note on the trumpet. 
there's more than 33 notes available on the trumpet. But think about every single note on the trumpet is a relationship, is a, is a friendship, is a, is a family member. And you want to have the closest relationship possible with each and every single note on the trumpet. So long songs is one of the best ways to do it because you're, you're sitting with one note and trying to make that note sound the most beautiful it can possibly sound on a consistent basis, either daily, weekly, or whatever. So uh, don't think that long tones are boring. Long tones is meditation. Uh, the more you do them, the better you'll be, the better you'll sound. I've never heard any trumpet player that sounds bad after playing long tones. If they do, then they're doing it wrong. So each note you need to have a close relationship with. And you do that with long tones. Cool. All right, y'all. Thanks for being here. Love the questions. Thank you for sitting here while I practice. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.